Now, when it comes to what are basal implants, let me tell all the dentists who are beginning. These are just a type of implants, only the configuration of implants changes. So I don't want to use very technical terms, but most of us are aware that basal implants are single piece implants as opposed to the conventional implants, which are two piece. What I mean by that is the fixture part, that is the thread part of the implant and the abutment part is in a single piece as opposed to conventional implantology where there are multiple different pieces. So the fixture is different, the abutment is different. And the second important thing about basal implantology is the morphology of these implants or the configuration is made in a way that it can engage the cortical bone which we all know is the stronger bone in the body and by you know practicing it and with expertise most basal implants can be placed uh, with a flapless protocol which I mean is there is a no cut given and they can be loaded immediately. So primarily because these implants engage in the basal bone or the deepest part of the bone that's how the nomenclature has been derived as basal implants and the implantology is called as basal implantology. Yeah. Great, thank you sir. So uh, why many dentists hesitate to practice basal implantology? Yeah. Why there is so much? So much hesitation, yes. So that's a very good question. But I think uh, Pooja, this hesitation has nearly faded. What I mean by this is that earlier, yes, when I was doing basal implants 8-10 years back, definitely there was a lot of hesitation from what I see because we are routinely conducting the courses and I have been given the opportunity to speak on various platforms and podiums. I am seeing that a uh, lot of acceptance for basal implants has picked up. One of the primary reasons being that it is very patient friendly. See what happens is if you have to tell the patient that you need to undergo a ridge plate or a bone graft or a sinus lift and then not only convince the patient but to do it on a routine basis, handle the challenges which come along with it. It is not a process which everyone would get comfortable with. But in basal implantology there are protocols where whether it's a resorb ridge or what you classify as a healthy ridge, the similar protocols with the flapless approach you can do in all the cases so it becomes I would say more patient friendly so whether doctor agree or no your customer your patient is really happy that he's doing flapless you're getting immediate teeth and that's what he's coming for he's coming for teeth he's not coming for implants or he's not coming uh, for uh, you know screws in the mouth ultimately he's come for the teeth yeah and what are the success rates for basal implantology like how many percent of cases we expect to succeed. So success rate of basal implantology is very very high. So let me tell you Dr. Pooja and all the viewers who are listening to this is that in our clinic now friends I am into practice since past 14 years and this all this I am sharing not to boast or anything is just like an eye opener. We place only basal implants in our practice which means we do not practice any other form of implantology. We have done a review for the last three years wherein the number of implants so i place roughly around 150 to 200 odd implants we are in 2022 and that number is rising exponentially so off late we place to close to around 150 to 200 implants in a month so in a span of a year you can say close to 2000 implants and i have done in my own clinic a detailed analysis of the success rate and you will be surprised to see that only seven implants not seven patients mind you when we do a full mouth implant, we may place close to around 15-20 implants. Only 7 implants the patient had problem. That also we cannot rule out whether it was an operator related issue or you know sometimes the site is infected or the bone selection was not wrong. But having said that, it was just 7 implants which makes it Dr. Pooja less than 2% in a resolved jaw. Which is a very very high number. Considering that I have seen in conventional implantology, lot of doctors, they are, you know, the patient rejects your treatment plan, which I consider it as a failure. Or the doctor says, up my implant possible, nahi hai. implants are not possible in you. Or sometimes you have done bone grafting, but it fails and implants are not fit. So if you compare apple to apple and you compare the number of resolved jaws we are handling, I would say the success rate with good techniques is minimal and this mind you not only applicable for me I have just given my statistics from my center 
for you to become it's like an eye opener but i am in touch with so many doctors because of we conducting courses or because of the kind of uh, uh, you know forum i have created and trust me this resonates with everyone most of the doctors which have come to across us and you know they are practicing basal implants in 3 4 years they have reported i would say almost like a 100% success rate so it sounds something you know uh, not possible or it sounds that you know you are just trying to boast but trust me dr pooja comparing the kind of cases we handle the success rate and the long term follow up i have also posted for those of you are interested on my youtube channel 3355 years follow ups uh, on my social media forum so if you are interested to see definitely uh, you can have a look on my youtube channel also and you will see that long term success also patients are really happy good great so there is a very really high success rate really high success, success rate. yeah rate. okay thank you sir and uh, how are basal implants are different from conventional implants like design wise yeah design wise like i told you already in the first question that basal implants are single piece implants uh, bcs implant that is a bicortical type of basal implants is a totally polished implants yeah. which means there is no sand blasting acid etches we do not rely on osteo integration it works on a totally orthopedic osteo fixation principle it's a detailed chapter too difficult to cover it in this small interview but definitely the principles are different concepts are different so anyone wanting to take up this practice i would strongly recommend that you should do some kind of advanced program to get into the system only then you can reap the benefits in basal implantology okay thank you sir and what will be the guidelines to start basal implantology in practice oh that's okay. a very good question so doctors who are keen or maybe uh you know you are not sure whether basal implantology is there for you you should uh, search on youtube for orientation in basal implantology my entire one hour lecture is there for doctors who are keen on the subject but they don't have information i think that could be a good start point where you watch this 45 minutes to one hour entire seminar and you see if this kind of implantology will benefit you i am sure it will but for you to make a decision it is better you see that video let's say that after watching the video you want to feel you feel that it will help your practice it will help your patients then the step 2 could be if you are more of a person who wants to go slow then you can start with reading the textbook or going for the online master class wherein you will get the detailed theoretical lectures about the concepts in basal implantology so the textbook reading as well as the online master class but for doctors who are more of the action takers they want to see how it is done or uh, you know which situations we are doing it what drilling protocols to be used and they want to see it practically you are always welcome for our 3 days program wherein step by step i will be guiding you with the theory lectures and also making you place implant in patients for doctors who feel they still want more we also have a residency program where it is a one on one training session which spans across 10 to 15 days it's a bit customizable and you will be placing full mouth implants including doing lab work and all the prosthetic steps will be done under mentor guidance so that will really give you an edge and confidence about how you could go about with this system right sir thank yeah. you thank you so much and can you tell me more about like uh, surgical kit and armamentarium required for uh, basal implant and how it is different and from conventional one. sure now this is the beauty it's actually a good question the armamentarium required this is the beauty of basal implants that with one kit you can do everything so the surgical kit comprises primarily of some six drills and some bone expansion screws and two drivers it's not at all complicated and you will see that with just this one simple kit you can handle all type of patients whether it's a resorb jaw pneumatized sinus or deficient bone volume as opposed to in conventional implantology wherein you need to have different kit so if you want to do a sin if you want to do a sinus lift you have you need a different kit if you want a ridge spread you require a different kit so you need to keep investing in kits and lot of uh, you know different materials but here the beauty is this simplifies our workflow the the workflow is similar in almost all cases the armamentarium is similar so that makes it less stressful not only for the doctor but it also gives an added edge to the doctor wherein with by mastering one technique 
Right. You can do all cases. So that I think should be a good eye opener for our viewers who are watching this uh, either on my YouTube channel or maybe listening to this podcast. I think you can really think for such a big, uh, you know, game changer this can be in your right. practice. So investment wise is also it is upper hand. Investment, yeah, definitely. Investment might see obviously because you are not investing in multiple kids. You are not investing in multiple programs, if I may dare to say it, because otherwise you have to do a direct sinus lift program, then hard and soft tissue mm-hmm. program, or if you want to do some bone grafting, IPRF, then you need to ha- have those kind of centrifugal machines, centrifuge machines. So lot of infrastructure and investment, time, money, effort will go. But here, if you see with one kit and one workflow, you will be able to manage. So definitely, the investment is one third, I would say. Right. Uh, as compared to or maybe even lesser than that as compared to conventional implantology. And like what will be the diagnostic aids required? Like what we all require to before we are doing patient what we need to do like See entire diagnosis and treatment planning puja it will be difficult to cover uh, on this interview because it's like a separate uh, chapter by itself but definitely I, w- I can say that it is something similar to what to do in conventional implantology. Most of us and most of the doctors, you will be surprised if I tell you, we can work only with a simple OPG X-ray. The use of CBCT X-ray is almost minimal, but it will become very difficult for me to explain why CBCT may not be needed. Uh, only OPG uh, you can handle the cases with with experience. So all this, you know, it it sounds very retrograde. So I am sure some doctors who are used to watching the CBCT, they will feel it's a retrograde thought of saying not to use CBCT. I'm not saying don't use CBCT, I'm saying the need for it starts reducing in this technique as opposed to conventional implantology where it is almost like a must have. Any kind of diagnostic aid, whether you do a mounted study model or OPG or CBCT, definitely it will help you in a better diagnosis or a planning. But with if you've done three, four, five or maybe 10 cases, and you start getting the knack of it, most of us, including me, we work only with the OPG X-ray. Great, great. Uh, and can you tell briefly about what is pterygoid implants? Yeah, definitely. So see, the one of the USP of uh, basal implantology or the single piece implantology, strategic implantology, fixed it in three days, single piece implant. So these are all different terminologies of the same science, basically. One of the biggest challenges most dentists have is handling the resorb posterior jaw. So in the maxilla, the sinus gets pneumatized and in the mandible, the inferior alveolar nerve is unfavorably placed. So a lot of times then you have to either do a all on four or have a cantilever prosthesis or you may have to do a procedure of extensive bone augmentation. But if you are placing a pterygoid implant, which is a distal anchorage point in the maxilla behind the sinus, you no longer have to do cantilever design or bone grafts. Mm-hmm. Similarly, in the mandible, when we when we say bypass the nerve, in simple language, we are placing the implant in close approximation to the nerve, bypassing it in a way without causing any injury. So we are not injuring the nerve, but yet placing the implants using the buccal lingual uh, buccal engagement technique or the lingual engagement technique, wherein we create a distal anchor points even in the mandible, and with all these things we are able to give a non-cantilevered prosthesis to the patient in immediate load protocol without any bone graft procedures. Great, so bone graft and all that complicated uh, procedures are not at all required? Not at all required, almost I would say they are redundant, if I may say they are outdated. Some special cases for maybe, uh, you know, just blowing up the zenith or something cosmetically, you may think about but functionality point of view implant placement point of view addition of bone is definitely not something you require for implant placement okay great and what are uh, bcs different uh, implants different from kos implants yeah so this this kos means basically the compressive implants and the bcs means basically the smooth surface implants the primary difference is, as the name suggests, the BCS or the smooth surface implants, they don't have any surface coating like sandblasting or acid etching as compared to the compressive implants which are having the sandblasting acid etching. The mechanism of action of both is different 
the indications are different which are beyond the scope of interview but definitely bcs implants or the smooth surface implants they are a game changer because in lot of resolved jaws in infected cases uh, i have put up even on my social media a lot of cases where we have put implants curate the cyst and put the implants or inculated a lesion and place the implants resolved jaws we have done with bcs implants pneumatic sinuses we handle with bcs implants so there are a lot of advantages periodontitis case aggressive periodontitis case so lot of advantages are there with the polished smooth surface implants those who are really keen just you can also visit my facebook channel just try on facebook dr rohan virani i'm sure you will get my pages or you can also search for the page implantology simplified and you will get a lot of cases and information over there as well one other thing i want to add for all the viewers or people who are listening to the podcast probably is that you can also look in for uh, www.bazelimplantstore.com so that's the website which i have dedicated for basal implantology and all the products services materials related to basal implantology are covered extensively on that website great sir so um, implants fail mainly because of peri implant dietis right so it's not a case with the uh, basal implant smooth implant smooth surface yeah. implant so peri implant dietis is i can say a man made disaster and you will be surprised with the number of patients we see daily routinely with the infection of implants so it's no longer about placing the implants it's about longevity mm-hmm. and definitely the smooth surface implants have an upper edge as compared to the rough surface implants because rough surface implants definitely as you rightly said they are prone to peri implantitis people are smokers they are diabetic the bone keeps uh, resolving there is uh, gum loss then the same threads which are created for the bone to fix around the or get integrated with the implants that same rough threads expo get attract the microflora and definitely yeah. peri implantitis is a huge problem yeah mm-hmm. you're right so that is just that is simply taken care, care of with the polished implants right and uh, what are contraindications like we heard more of advantages what will be the contraindications for the basal implant in which case we which are not supposed see, to so that. there is no absolute contraindication for implantology except for people who are on bisphosphonate therapy so any patient who is on iv bisphosphonates is an absolute contraindication for implantology itself not just basal implantology apart from that everything else i can say is a relative contraindication what i mean by that is let's say the patient is heavy diabetic then you may want to control the diabetes or the patient is having some kind of a bleeding related disorder or something like that definitely definitely you should check the blood parameters see if systemically the patient is good to go otherwise there is no contraindication as such for basal implants great great sir thank you so much for this very informative discussion thank you so much